What's good Deck Gang, welcome back to my channel where I bring you the latest news around Steam Deck, other PC handhelds, and PC gaming at large. You know, this week has been full of good news for PC gamers. Like, for instance, this dude discovered that you can actually build a gaming PC without any RAM because the GPU already has memory on board. You've been doing it all wrong, PC gamers. Sell your RAM now while you can still get some money for it. In all seriousness, Valve just landed their latest feature on the stable channel. Personally, I think it's one of Valve's best features when you compare it to competition like Xbox, Switch, and PlayStation. Also, AMD has confirmed FSR 4, and I think we can expect this is gonna help power the Steam Deck 2, considering AMD also confirmed that FSR 4 has a huge focus on PC handhelds. And Microsoft committed to moving security measures out of the kernel, so we should discuss that as well. Finally, it looks like there is some good news on the horizon for fans of Tony Hawk. So if you're growing older all the time, looking older all the time, but feeling younger in your mind, then join me as we kickflip into this first story. Steam Families has just landed in the stable channel. Steam Families has to easily be the best version of any family sharing for any digital video game platform out there, I guess aside from platforms that have no DRM whatsoever. In any case, here is how it works. Steam Families are intended for a household of up to six family members and it's a collection of features around game sharing, parental controls, and purchase requests. You can manage your Steam Family from any of your computers, including a Steam Deck, but it can also be managed from the browser browser or from the mobile app. For game sharing, all members of a Steam family are able to share their libraries with each other, and if your family collectively has multiple copies of a game, then that will allow for multiple family members to play at the same time while online. So for example, my account and my son's account both own a copy of Spelunky 2. That means that any two members of the Steam family can be playing Spelunky 2 at the same time. But collectively, we only have one copy of Black Myth Wukong, so only one member can play that game at a time, again, so long as you're online on Steam. If if you instead log into the Steam offline mode and the game supports offline play, then you technically should be able to still play this game at the same time. Now, just so you know, there are two types of Steam family members, adults and children. Adults have access to parental control features, including the ability to decide what games children can play, as well as which Steam features they can access. Adults can also set playtime limits and view activity reports for children. Finally, children can request that an adult family member pay for items in their shopping cart, which an adult can approve conveniently from their mobile app or even from an email link. This is a huge improvement to the previous family sharing functionality. Valve recommends that if you're still using that, you should set up a Steam family since that old feature will eventually be retired. Steam makes the transition easy by recommending accounts to invite based on who you were previously sharing with. I've been making heavy use of this since it's been in beta. I have two kids and they've each taken to playing PC games on the Steam Deck. Unfortunately, that meant that I had to keep their Steam Decks on the beta channel, which I would prefer not to do for devices that the kids are using. So now, I'm able to keep them on the stable channel and take advantage of all the new family sharing functionality. Personally, I think this is much better than any family sharing feature out there, but what do you think? Is there something out there that is better than this? Let me know. By the way, this update in the stable channel also has a number of other improvements that have been in the beta channel up until now. There's a new maximum resolution dropdown in the display settings that allows you to set the max resolution for all games on your system. The friends list will now tell you who's playing on their Steam Deck using the new Steam Deck icon, and notably the entire screenshots manager has been redesigned and rehauled. There are some other fixes and improvements as well, so I'll leave a link to the patch notes in the description. If you're still over in the beta channel and looking for some improvements there, well, there are two small updates to be aware of. Valve just released a new beta client as well as SteamOS 3.6.13, which is the latest release candidate for SteamOS 3.6. Notably, both of these address some nasty game recording bugs, so that functionality should be more stable after these updates. Finally, on the subject of Valve updates, you should know that to celebrate Steam's birthday of September 12th, Steam Deck LCD models are on sale once again until September 26th. If you check the store, you'll see that the 64GB LCD model is 15% off and under $300, while the 512GB model is 25% and now under $340. It still feels like a modern miracle to see a really good PC handheld available for under $300. You can even pick this up and replace the NVMe drive if you wanted more onboard storage. Now these are technically the discontinued models, so it is unclear how much stock Valve have left, but who knows because these devices have gone on sale a number of times at this point. 
Over the weekend, Microsoft announced significant changes coming to how they're handling security software, which would include kernel level anti-cheat like easy anti-cheat and invasive DRM like the Nuvo. This has caused a lot of celebration because of what this may mean for the future of Linux gaming. One of the biggest hurdles for Linux adoption in PC gaming has been the multiplayer online games that have incompatible anti-cheats, games like Destiny 2 and Fortnite. After the CrowdStrike incident raised concerns about how security is handled within Windows, many people speculated that moving this sort of software out of the Windows kernel was the next logical step. Well, earlier this week, Microsoft hosted the Windows Endpoint Security Ecosystem Summit, where they and many vendors, not to mention government officials, discussed plans for the short term and the long term. The longer term plans are the ones that are relevant here, and Microsoft summarized them in a blog post saying, quote, in addition, our summit dialogue looked at longer term steps, serving resilience and security goals. Here, our conversation explored new platform capabilities Microsoft plans to make available in Windows, building on the security investments we have made in Windows 11. Windows 11's improved security posture and security defaults enable the platform to provide more security capabilities to solution providers outside of kernel mode, end quote. There's more in the blog post, but at this point, it's safe to say that Microsoft will be moving forward with this plan, and this is going to impact software like the Nuvo and Easy Anti-Cheat, but does it mean that we can look forward to games being more Linux compatible in the future? On the one hand, moving this functionality out of the kernel means that there may be an opportunity for a translation layer like Proton to implement a shim that would work in Linux. On the other hand, pretty much all of the games with anti-cheat have a relatively easy and straightforward way to enable play on Linux, and they haven't done so. If these publishers are going to continue to be hostile towards Linux, there's not going to be much that Proton can do. And in fact, if they're going to be this hostile, I don't want them. Linux adoption has been going pretty well without them. And at some point, I think they will realize that they need Steam Deck more than the other way around. Do you agree, disagree, post your thoughts in the comments. Another big piece of news for PC handhelds is that AMD FSR 4 is confirmed and on the way. I'm pretty excited about this because it's something that I expect will be very beneficial for the next Steam Deck, not to mention all the other PC handhelds. Deck Wizard has a great summary tweet about this. Basically, FSR 4 has already been in development for nearly a year, and it's rumored to launch next year in 2025. It's going to be focused on handhelds introducing AI-based upscaling, as well as AI-based frame generation. The goal is to increase performance and quality while maximizing battery life. This all comes courtesy of an interview that Tom's Hardware conducted late last week during IFA 2024 with AMD's Jack Kuhn, Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Computing and Graphics Business Group. Presumably, some of this tech is what AMD has backported into the PS5 Pro GPU. We've already gotten word from Digital Foundry that the upscaling technology in PS5 Pro PSSR is better than FSR, although still not as good as DLSS. I would also imagine that PC handhelds being released in 2025 and beyond are absolutely going to be leveraging this, and in that way, it was great to hear Jack Hune's emphasis on handhelds and battery life. Here is a direct quote. On the handheld side, my number one priority is battery life. If you look at the Asus ROG Ally or the Lenovo Legion Go, it's just that battery life is not there. I need to play Wukong for three hours, not 60 minutes. This is where frame generation and interpolation come in, so this is the FSR 4 that we're adding. As usual, I would urge my traditional skepticism of tech marketing, but I would also be lying if I said I wasn't intrigued by the future of this tech and how much it may in fact improve battery life and overall fidelity in PC handhelds. All right, so which games got updates that are beneficial to Steam Deck players and PC handheld players? Well, quite a few actually. First, Jedi Survivors has been updated with Patch 9. Patch 9 has a number of performance improvements, but first, let's scroll to the bottom of the patch notes, shall we? What do we have here? That's right, the Nuvo DRM has been removed. Once again, patient gamers have been proven right, showing that it does in fact pay to wait until the game is cheaper and performs better. Like I said, there are also other improvements to performance. It says there are frame rate improvements for various hardware configurations. There are fixes for several sources of frame rate hitching, which now results in an overall smoother gameplay. Ray tracing has also been optimized for CPU usage and it should now scale better for higher end GPUs. Finally, there are fixes for performance related to using a mouse as gameplay input. It looks like it was nearly 50% off in June, so maybe we're going to get another nice discount as we get more Steam sales in the last quarter of the year. 
On the subject of Star Wars games on Steam Deck, there is a little progress with Star Wars Outlaws, but not too much. Deck Wizard was able to get Star Wars Outlaws into actual gameplay using Proton GE 9-13 and setting a four gigabyte UMA buffer. You can see in this video that performance is, as he puts it, horrendous, not to mention it will crash every few seconds. It looks like there are plenty of challenges getting this to run on even more powerful handhelds. And based on this video from Game Tech Planet, I would say you don't really get a reasonable experience until you're using something like the RLG Ally X, which not only has the increased horsepower, but it also has additional memory that you're going to need for a high-end game like this one. Likewise, the demo to Final Fantasy 16 got its own update with update 1.02. This also fixes some performance issues, namely stuttering. Overall, it's a considerable improvement from when the demo first released. Once again, Deck Wizard is the hardest working man on the scene and was kind enough to showcase gameplay of this latest patch on his channel. Although FF16 and Star Wars Outlaws are not necessarily games I would recommend playing on the Steam Deck, it does seem clear that the Steam Deck audience still wants to play the latest and greatest on their machines because not only has Black Myth Wukong continued to be the number one played game on the system, but even Space Marine 2 nearly cracked the top 20, and that game is pretty rough on the deck. Cyberpunk 2077, on the other hand, is a game that has always played pretty well on Steam Deck, considering how gorgeous it looks. This game recently received patch 2.13, which includes support for AMD FSR 3 and Intel XeSS. Taking a break from performance-focused updates, Dead Island 2 was updated this week with patch 6. That brings a new co-op horde mode as well as new game plus. This update is timed with the launch of the Ultimate Edition of this game, which includes two story expansions and some extra content. Good stuff. Doom 1 plus 2 has now been verified on Steam Deck, which is great news. While I personally don't look at Steam Deck verified, I am happy with this news because the previous status of unsupported was completely misleading. Apparently Valve had not gotten around to re-reviewing the game and it's now been updated with the correct badge. Definitely go play the new campaign that's included in this re-release. It's called Legacy of Rust and it is a blast. It's a serious challenge even for diehard fans, but I don't consider it unfair. In fact, I agree agree with Savi's take on it. Here, have a listen. This game spawns an army of pinkies, ghouls, revenants, and cacodemons. I'm here for it. I can handle this. But this is ultra-violence. This is level two. This week also saw the release of three of my most anticipated games of the year, Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection, I Am Your Beast, and Grapple Dogs, the sequel to the cutest canine platformer on Steam. All of these are getting incredible reviews, so definitely check them out if they're your style. Funny story about Marvel vs. Capcom though, seven time Evo champion Justin Wong has been playing on ranked and absolutely destroying fools online, and people are leaving reviews about their experience playing against him on Steam. He's been playing as the Wazzler on Steam, and here are some of their user reviews that claim to have encountered Beetlejuice himself. My favorite is this one that says, Ran into someone online named The Wazzler. The Iron Man combo he did to me gave me enough time to get dinner started for the family. 10 out of 10. Don't worry, Steam Gamers. Justin Wong has also been tormenting people on PS4, and it looks like he's already set his sights on Switch Gamers as well. Hopefully, that gives us a little time to climb ranked without Candyman breathing down our necks. Unfortunately, there do appear to be a few matchmaking issues that Capcom still seems to be sorting out, but personally, it would be an honor to get my ass handed to me by the Marvel GOAT. So Emmy Deck has received a big update with Emmy Deck 2.3 beta. Primarily, this version has an overhauled and unified user interface. Liam from Gaming on Linux has snapped quite a few pics of this improved UI, and it's looking quite good. Likewise, Decky Loader 3 is finally out. This is meant to be a big improvement to the overall experience. Here are the highlights according to, once again, Gaming on Linux. Quote, there's better error handling, more in-depth progress notifications for Decky and plugins, along with Decky being properly usable without an internet connection. There's also various UI styling improvements. You should also hopefully never see the boot loop problem again, with some recent changes, end quote. This update comes at a great time with Steam families landing into stable. Although I love Decky Loader, I've been avoiding using it for almost a year now outside of some videos, precisely because the experience has not been stable or consistent for me as someone that primarily uses the beta channel on the Steam Deck. With the Steam Deck now maturing, I'd like to stick with the stable channel for a while, and that gives me a better chance to experiment with Decky Loader where I can use alternative themes using CSS Loader, or I can customize my art using Steam Grid DB, 
or I can stay up to date with Proton reports using ProtonDB. And actually, one more thing I can do is install some snazzy custom boot videos. Recently on the Steam Deck HQ subreddit, I saw these badass boot videos that were being showcased. They're by a designer who goes by the name of Oh You Mad, huh? Which, amazing name by the way. Both the graphic design and the audio design on these are absolutely stellar. So yeah, you can follow the instructions on the page to see how to install these boot videos if you are interested. I'll leave a link to that in the description. By the way, if you want to stay up to date on this sort of stuff, I really do want to recommend the Steam Deck HQ subreddit. Over the years, many people have rightfully complained about the toxic nature of the Steam Deck subreddit, and I've tried to stay away from that subject because there didn't seem to be much of a solution, but now I would argue there is a solution. You all are probably familiar with SteamDeckHQ.com, the wonderful website dedicated to all things Steam Deck. SDHQ also has a YouTube channel and a podcast that I regularly appear on. But what you may not know is that Steam Deck HQ has an excellent subreddit that has a variety of posts, not just pictures of Steam Decks in exotic locales. So definitely give it a visit and a follow to show your support. Deckbuttons.com just unveiled their latest line of Steam Deck buttons. You can either get these new sets in raw copper or raw aluminum. This is the fusion of real metal and high quality resin. They're genuinely really cool and I've never seen anything like this. You can brush these for the nice brushed finish and that's what the creator recommends for beginners, but he also shows off some other neat styles. That copper with the patina looks sick, but it's not anything I would use on my electronics. That just makes me want to see a Rapture style Steam Deck. Anyway, you can pre-order these now on deckbuttons.com website. All right, I also promised some good news for Tony Hawk fans. Recently in an interview with Mythical Kitchen, Tony Hawk had this to say. He said, quote, I wish I could tell you more, but I can tell you that I've been talking to Activision again. We are working on something. It will be something that the fans will truly appreciate. Vague though that may be, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater does turn 25 this year, and honestly, I will take whatever scraps I can get from the Hawkman. All right, Deck Gang, that's going to do it for this week's episode. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. Deck Gang out. Goodbye.